Hi, this is Sean Murphy of SK Murphy Inc. I'll be the MC for today's briefing by Sandra Clark for Patco on LinkedIn. Sandra Clark is a trainer and coach who specializes in helping busy professionals, teams, and companies get the most out of their use of LinkedIn. Sandra helps them build their online brand and showcase their expertise. She understands the finer points of LinkedIn technology and can explain key concepts and how to implement them for immediate results. Sandra. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the introduction. Uh, nice to meet you all. And I'm going to be learning about you as we go through, and you'll learn a little bit more about me. One of the things I'd like to encourage you to do is put questions when you think about them in chat. I may not answer them right away if they're absolutely critical that they have to be answered now or you won't be able to understand anything else I say, then um, there's a couple of people who are authorized to interrupt me boldly, but otherwise I'll hold them to the end. But if you don't put them in when you think about them, you'll get to the end and you go, I know I had a question, what was it? It was something to do. So just put it in while you think about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, um, I'm happy to share my slides after with, with people. Um, but the slides mostly don't have the information. Um, they're like visual uh, keys to the things I'm gonna talk to you about. Um, so let's see. I'll be, well, you should be able to see my slides now. So my approach to LinkedIn is all about relationships. And that to me is the incredible value and the power of LinkedIn. It's not just about selling, selling your services. Sure, people do that, you can do that, but the real power is in building those relationships, which has become harder to do over this time of the past few years of COVID, but it's always easier um, to uh, supplement by using LinkedIn. Um, so uh, networking and building relationships. These are what I would call a couple of my typical clients. They are busy, smart professionals. They're good at what they do. They're busy doing that. And it's like, now I tell them, you've got to do market, your, market yourself. You've got to put yourself out there online. You've got to promote yourself. And they're, oh, I just don't have time to mess with this. So um, they come to me because I can get them up and running quickly on LinkedIn, um, get them pointed in the right direction so they can go back to doing what they love. I call it social media for the socially reluctant. And that is most people don't want to be putting themselves out there online. They just want to do their thing. So I like to encourage them that you've got to do that. Now, you notice that little um, QR code in the top. This has been around on LinkedIn for a while, and it kind of was popular when we were doing in-person meetings, and it kind of went away. But it's remained there. And this is a way, it, I mean, really, are business cards still going to be there in the future? Or are they going to go away? I ordered a bunch of business cards before COVID, 500 or so. I'm thinking that will be my last order of cards I ever do. Now your QR code is part of your LinkedIn profile. If anybody doesn't know how to do it, you're welcome to send me a message. I'll send you little kind of um, instructions how to do it, but it's on your phone. And if you pull up your QR code and someone scans it, like if you were to scan with your camera, my QR code now, it would bring up my LinkedIn profile. So tip number one, before we even barely get rolling here, when it pulls it up, if you click the connect button, it's going to send me a message to connect with no opportunity to personalize it. Wasted opportunity to start a conversation. Conversations lead to relationships. Relationships lead to perhaps the opportunity to do business together. So little trick is instead of clicking the connect, click on the three dots and it will open up an option to, I think it's called personalize your invite. And now you can write a little message, um, met you at the at PACA or somewhere else. Powerful. And I think this is going to stay around now when people get back in person and they've got used to contactless payment. Why not contactless business cards? So again, if you need instructions how to do this, just send me a message. I encourage you to connect with me on LinkedIn. Tell me where you met me. Um, I'm much more likely to want to help you or give you answers. I, I won't do an evaluation of your whole profile, but I will certainly answer a specific question or something that you need help with that I might not cover today. I'm going to include today um, a lot of things from the basic to the advanced. So pick out of here what's relevant to you and just ignore the rest because otherwise you think, oh, it's too much stuff, I can't do it. So just pick what you can and keep making progress. So I'm going to talk about creating a great LinkedIn profile. 
attracting attention to that great profile and the power of connecting. So I've seen a few of your profiles and I have my own opinion about those I've seen, but most of you I haven't seen. So a little truth in, um, little on an honor moment here, where you think of your own profile on a scale of one to five, with one being, mm, I think I remember my password, I don't know, it's been so long since I've been in there, through to five, which is, dang, I think I'm pretty good. I just came to hang out today and see if there was something new on my profile. Um, and, and so, and tell me, just put in the chat, sorry, my dog wants to go out the door and he can't open the door himself. So excuse me, I'm just gonna move one minute. There we go, the joys of in-home offices. So put in the chat where you think your profile is on a scale of one to five. One being yeah, basics, uh, five being pretty dang good, three in the middle there. And I'm gonna take, oh, I see all kinds of people filling that in. And I will take a look after and I'll save the chat and I may match up what you say you are to what I think you are. Um, so good, where are those numbers coming in? Uh, one, oh, I see a lot of low numbers, two, three, four. Sometimes people will say to me, you know, five or something. And when I do it in person, I kind of look them in the eye and say, you know, I'm going to be checking, right? So they move their number down a little. Um, everybody's profile can always do with some improvement. Mine can. I have a couple of, not exactly mistakes, but a couple of things in my profile that are not quite best practices because I need it as examples for my clients because I can't always find an example that's appropriate to share afterwards. And I change it um, as I learn to. I take training all the time. So looks like there will be something for everybody here. Mistake number one, um, and it may not be what you think. You might think it's like, you know, have a picture or something like that. But actually, do you remember the old Kevin Costner movie, um, Build It and They Will Come? Um, I mean, Field of Dreams was the name of the movie, but the idea was, uh, build it and they will come. So with me, the number one mistake on LinkedIn, especially for some of you who have been around for a little while, is let it sit there and think they will come. So you built this nice LinkedIn profile, maybe even paid someone for some help. And you think it's great, it's perfect. Why do I need to change it? I haven't changed my job. I've had my own consulting business for years. Everything's still the same. Well, it's like having a beautiful, shiny new car. If you don't use it, and you don't use your profile, LinkedIn puts it in long-term parking because they don't want it to get any nicks or dings on it either. And they leave it there, they don't show it up. So you've got to use that profile. You've got to take it out on the road and drive it so that people will see it. And the LinkedIn algorithm sees that you're on LinkedIn, you're active, and now they're going to show you up more. You're going to engage with people, they're going to see you. And you know, I just see so many people um, maybe they built their profile nicely a few years ago. LinkedIn has changed so much that what was great, even just three years ago, is maybe now only good. And there's a couple of major changes in the amount of content they show before you have to click on show more. So you really need to pay attention to what shows. So a lot of people on LinkedIn, it keeps growing. I used to keep changing the number. And I can't keep up with this. I know some in the range of 730, 750 million, a lot of people. So all of these people, they're opportunities for you to make connections, build relationships, maybe earn the opportunity to do business. So sometimes people will say to me, Sandra, I never got an opportunity through LinkedIn. I've got a job, never got a client. And I say, okay, well, how many clients did you lose through LinkedIn? And they go, what do you mean? Well, I don't know. Go, exactly. You don't know because people come, they take a look, they don't like what they see, and they move right along. So you can't afford to that. Even if somebody refers you, they look at their profile, it doesn't match up to what somebody said about you, they may move along, and you may never have that opportunity. So pay attention, it does matter. So my magical mystery formula for LinkedIn success, so hard, needs to be complete. Um, now, complete doesn't mean absolutely every single section of LinkedIn filled in. There's a lot of miscellaneous things you can fill in that may not be relevant to you, but all the basics, which I'll talk about in a moment, complete, um, it used to be called an all-star profile, and people got all excited because they thought, I'm an 
all-star. All-star just means the bases are complete. It does not mean quality. So be careful when LinkedIn throws out these things at you. Keywords, you need to know the keywords that someone would use if they were looking for someone with your services. If you don't know what they are by this point, most of you are fairly seasoned in your career, you know, you should definitely figure that out. You need to have a certain number of connections and I'll frighten some of you a little later by telling you just how many that should be. And you need activity. If I could have lightning bolts, it would be putting point to this one because this is the magic of being visible on LinkedIn. And all of those things to give you together give you maximum visibility and high search engine optimization, SEO ranking. Now we think of SEO for Google. This is specific to LinkedIn, although it does have implications to Google search if you've got your profile open. Not everybody does. You should. So these are what I call the basic components of the profile. Um, and I'll talk in detail about some of them and not others. So you need your photo. Sorry, no excuses. You need to be a real person. You need a professional headline. I'll be talking more about that. Your about section. Can't tell you how many people avoid that. Job history. Your education as appropriate. You don't need to go back to the beginning of time, nor do you need to include the dates. It's like instant facelift. Take the dates off your education. Good degree, good university. We don't need to see when it was. For me, that was a long time ago. Skills, um, again, relates to keyword search. Contact information. There's a little place at the top of your profile that says contact. And I can't tell you how many people forget to update that. And they've got like a website that's a company they no longer work at, That's um, they've changed their website, it's no longer accurate, wrong information. So at the very least, do check that. And um, connections. So let's dig into some of the details of some of these that I consider the most important. Uh, people want to refer you. Please make it easy. Make it easy to find you. Um, make sure that your name that, that you are known by professionally is the one you're using on your profile. If you're known by a nickname, you may want to include that. Um, somebody the other day, and she always goes by Deb. And so she had Deborah, and actually I couldn't find her in a search for Deb. So make sure that you make it easy for people to find you to refer you. So mistake number two, this is probably more what you might expect to see. No picture, an old picture, or a bad quality profile picture. Now, it's if you don't have a picture on LinkedIn, you sort of do. You have this one, like a bag of your head saying, ah, don't look at me. I'm old, fat, and ugly, and I don't want anybody to see that. Um, you just need, because especially nowadays when we may not be seeing you in person, uh, we need to know, you know, we need to see that warm, authentic smile. It, you need to, ideally, you look like someone we want to reach across the screen and shake your hand. So it's just your head and neck. Uh, we don't want your whole body shot. Uh, for a man, we don't need ties unless that's part of your brand. If you're in law or real estate, maybe you wear a tie. But in general, if you want to look more like the managerial, more dressed up, you might wear a sport coat, uh, but no tie. Women, you know, just a nice top. You know, you don't want, you should look like you. You should look like you on a good day, not your best day, not your wedding day, not your kid's wedding day. I'm sorry, but you are never going to look like that again. Um, so that includes your picture. If you have this beautiful picture taken recently, it was my daughter's wedding. You know, I don't want that picture with the hair and the long dangly earrings for the men, the tuxedo, <laughs> and the bow tie or something. So just, it should be no more than two to three years old. Um, I, my photo was not that old, but I went gray, decided to go gray last year. So since I teach this stuff, I thought, had to have new pictures taken. I met with my photographer in a park so that we could do that during COVID. So no excuse, sorry, you do need that picture. So your headline, your headline is your mini advertisement. And a lot of you ignore this. This is at the top of your profile. I change mine around all the time. So what I've got now is not exactly this, but it used to be 120 characters. It's now 220 characters doesn't mean you have to use all of it but there's room there to give a little bit more information now if you've just got your job title and your company name that's a wasted opportunity so have some of your keywords 
and maybe what it is you uniquely offer. So this is why I call it mistake number three, using the default headline. CEO, okay, I'm impressed. CEO, CEO of a company of one, eh, maybe. Founder at Davis Management. Okay, well, founder, cool. What the heck does Davis Management do? You were telling me nothing. You're wasting an opportunity. When I'm active on LinkedIn, my headline, the first line of my headline shows up. So I want to take advantage of that. Financial advisor at Clark Concerting. Well, at least we've got financial advisor. So we're beginning to get a little more information. But basically, this sends me to sleep. You don't want to bore me. You know, it's really embarrassing to have a presenter who just falls asleep. So don't do that. Have something a little more exciting. So these are just some examples randomly chosen. Uh, managing director, Clarence Advertiser. So he's included his title. For some of you, that may be important. Speaker on valuation, M&A issues. Um, and people have included a variety of things. So my formula, if you like, is title. Now, when it's your own business, you don't necessarily need your own title. I don't use CEO or whatever is not relevant, but where it's relevant, include your title plus a keyword, plus a keyword, plus a keyword, and what it is you uniquely offer. Recognizing that that first line is what is going to show up. So make sure you deliver in the beginning there. Has somebody got, uh, did you make sure you're muted? I'm hearing some background rustling there. So now I get a little excited and you want me to be excited. Although I talk fast when I present anyways, I get excited and I talk even faster. Maybe that's not such a good thing, but please give me something a little more interesting about you. I know you're interesting people. I've met a number of you. I know you are interesting. So show that please. So your about section used to be called summary, now called about. This is your 30 second elevator pitch, a little bit more than 30 seconds. And so if you went to an in-person networking event and you introduced yourself, I hope you wouldn't say, hello, Sandra Clark. She is the creator of LinkedIn mentoring and she helps busy professionals. Third person, sorry, no. You wanna communicate just as you would in person who you are and what it is you do. You know, I'm Sandra Clark. You wouldn't say your name in this section, but I help busy professionals create great LinkedIn profiles so they can get the results they want. Communicate who you are, your excitement about what you do, and client-facing language, how um, what you do for them. There used to be a fashion, if you like, a style on LinkedIn where you just told your story, your history. That's, you may, de depending on your situation, that may still be true but in general if you're in business this wants to be something about you how you got into what you're doing but the first part of it especially you want to make sure is client facing what it is you are going to do for your clients include potentially your contact information you say sandra why would i have that there it's in that little box above but that confirmation contact information at the top is only visible to your um connections um, so you might want to include it right at the top of your about section. I don't know about you, but I want to make it really easy for clients, potential clients to reach me. I put my phone, my email, my website. Now, other things you can do, um, add a background banner. Um, it's free. It's easy. You can have one designed for you. Like I have, you can use um, a picture that you're authorized to use. Um, that communicates something about you, adds a little bit of excitement. Um, there's a couple of new things on LinkedIn. And that is, well, it's not even that new anymore, but many of you probably don't know about it. Have you ever gone to someone's profile, mine being one of them, and you go to the profile and it's like you see this little moving video? And it's like, what? What was that? I missed it. It's three seconds that a little video plays. If you click on it, it plays a 30 second video with sound and ideally with captions. Now, knowing many of you as I do, many of you will probably never do this, but I at least want you to know that when you see this, this is what it is. You can click on it. You can see somebody introducing themselves. If you want to do it, be aware you have to upload it from your phone. You could create the video on your desktop, but then you would need to download it to your phone and upload it from there to your LinkedIn profile through the LinkedIn app. 
So maybe you're not going to do that, but at least I want you to know what it is. But this other thing is definitely something you can do. It's intended for the name pronunciation. Well, it's 10 seconds. I don't know about you, but it doesn't take 10 seconds to say Sandra Clark. So you also can include a, um, a little marketing message um, about what it is you do. So if you are going to do that and you say, well, everybody knows how to say my name, Stan Smith, I don't need to say that. Include your name as well as your little 10 seconds. You probably want to be nine seconds because LinkedIn will cut you off if it's 10 seconds point one. So again, easy to do. You have to do it on your phone. On, you go to edit your profile and say add audio pronunciation. Just click and hold, add your audio, either save it or try again. Took me a few attempts. Um, so add that if your name is mangled and be aware that if you're going to be meeting with someone, I know about you, but I feel so much more respectful if I can go into a meeting and know how to say their name. And so I will check, have they added this? And then I go and make, you said it right. And they're so impressed. And it's a great um, start to a business relationship. So this is... Um, for those of you who have your own business, if you are showing next to your company name, a little, we call it the gray tombstone box, it's three little blocks, um, and you don't have your logo. And sometimes some of you have been in business for 20 years and you still have the little gray tombstone box. You just need to add a company page to LinkedIn. You need to add your information and logo there. Now, maybe you're not gonna spend a lot of time and effort on your company page, getting followers, posting on it but at the very least have it so you've got the logo. It won't automatically add your logo to where you've got your company. You have to manually kind of go in again and attach it. And sometimes that's a little quirky and tricky, um, but go ahead and do that. No reason not to like say it's free, it's easy. It takes maybe five minutes, um, so why not? So your history and your job experience. Keywords where possible. A sentence or two and several bullets, you don't need to include absolutely everything and include specific accomplishments. Now, if your business now is quite different from the businesses you worked at when you worked for a company in the past, maybe you've got very minimal information, but the fact that you worked for well-known companies still adds an element to your credibility. Um, so do include that job experience. You don't have to go back to the beginning of time. Um, but um, you know, go back as far as is relevant. Sometimes people want to include a well-known company that was like a long time ago, but that they don't like showing how old that is. You can reference working for that company in your about section and avoid adding it to your experience if you're concerned about showing your age. If you have your own business, you're probably okay about the fact that you may have a few gray hairs. Silicon Valley in general is rather ageist. So some people like to obscure that a little. So there are ways of doing that. So skills and endorsements, do they matter? Sort of yes, sort of no. LinkedIn tell you they do. Having the skills on your profile at all do matter because they're good for keyword search. Endorsements are nice to have. If you're a job seeker, they definitely help. They make you show up a little bit more if you've got more endorsements. Um, but I'd be more concerned that you've got the right words listed there than I would be about endorsements for most of you with um, your own businesses. You can change the order. The algorithm of LinkedIn can see all of them. You can have up to 50. Use all of those. Take advantage. But people only see those first three. So make sure the first three are the ones that are most important that you want to be seen. And you can change the order. I wouldn't worry about the order of all 50. Just the first three are the only ones I really encourage you to change. Recommendations on LinkedIn, yes, they do matter. And you should be collecting these regularly throughout your professional life. If it's your own business, collect at least a couple a year. Um, if you work you know, at a company, you want to collect at least one or two for every position you've have held. And then when you've got those recommendations, you can take that recommendation, including the picture of the person and put them on your website. You can't do it the other way around though. People have to add it themselves on LinkedIn and they're putting their reputations on their line. They're adding their credibility to recommend you. So hugely valuable. 
But as I say, you know, you ask the person, but then you can also put them on your website. So do get recommendations. And if you haven't been doing it in the past and you feel kind of embarrassed, ask now. What you can do also is give recommendations. When you give a recommendation, it shows on their profile if they accept it. And now you've got free advertising on that person's profile. So if you had a great relationship with a vendor you used or a, a partner, you give them the recommendation, it's now advertising on their profile. So yes, that does matter. So there are all kinds of additional sections you can add on LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn changed the way it looks. They now call it core, recommended, and what is that additional? Um, and under each section is a different thing. Um, but you don't have to add all of these, but just be aware, sometimes people put random things in the wrong, <laughs> random things in the wrong places. And it's because they don't know there actually is a home for it. I'm just gonna close my door so you don't need to hear the barking. <laughs> it's usually better behaved than that. Um, So um, this is something I noticed a number of you haven't taken advantage of. It's, I've said it's new. It's really not new, but I still see people not taking advantage. It's a section called Featured, and it appears prominently if you use it right in the middle of your profile. And you can add videos, articles, posts, links, company successes. You can add client testimonials here. If you've got a great testimonial, but you have it in a different place, they haven't done it on LinkedIn, you could actually make it look pretty and add it to uh, the featured section. Um, so do take advantage of this. I do not recommend adding something like a resume. Um, one doesn't look pretty, it's meant to be a visual element and there are many reasons not to put a resume on, on your profile. So, this is an example of what it looks like. It shows the last three you've added. You can add more and then scroll through to see more. I usually have a selection on mine that shows something that's a video, something that's a post and something that's an article. And they appear a little bit differently, but ideally use something that's got color um, and has some variety. Um, if you work for a company that's not your own, you can add something from the company there. It doesn't have to be you personally. But I encourage you to add something to that. Be aware that some, if you add a link, some websites are, there's a technical term that I should write down so I remember it. I just call it, they're not social media sharing friendly. So you add the link and it, it's like, it just looks ugly. There's like a little square box or something in the middle. And um, so that's the nature of the website it's pulled from. And there's a way, there are ways of getting around that, but I would not recommend if that's the way it shows up don't use it because it just doesn't look very nice. And it's about the visual. Everything's about marketing and visual these days. Um, so some of you may have noticed there's a thing called creator mode. This is new. Um, and in general, for most of you, I would say it's not the right way to go. There are some advantages to it, but you need to be, I would say, at the right place in your LinkedIn lifespan to do it. In general, you would want at least 4,000 followers before you turned it on. And you would want to be someone who's regularly sharing content. You are a creator who's sharing content. There are advantages, things that you have, you know, you get the LinkedIn newsletter. Somebody had a question about the LinkedIn newsletter. Um, some people without creator mode get the newsletter, but mostly you have to turn this on to get it. You have LinkedIn Live. There's some other things they're adding to it. Um, but for most of you, if you are not writing content, you're saying at the top, hey, I write about, I talk about, and then we look at your profile and say, he doesn't talk about that. He's just full of it. It reduces your credibility to me. It also makes the default to follow you instead of to connect with you. So in my case, if people are interested in what I have to offer, I really want them to connect with me. I wanna start a conversation. I wanna see how I can help. I don't want them to just follow me and see my content. If they want, they can still choose to do that. But so, if, you know, those of you who have questions about that can ask me more when we get to questions there. 
but for most of you, I'm going to recommend that you don't do it. So the size of your network matters. Um, I love when I do this in person and I get to look you in the eye when I say how many I think you should have. So, okay, if you have under 100 connections, I'm guessing all of you have more than that. You're visible to about 5% of the LinkedIn population. Now, 5% of over half a billion or three quarters of a billion, still a lot of people. The magic starts to happen when you have over 500. Now you start to be visible to maybe 95% of the LinkedIn population. But the real fairy dust in this is I recommend at least 30 connections for every year of your age. I will let you do your own math for a moment. And some of you should look a little worried. Uh, now, that does not mean with my 7,000 connections that I am over 200 years old. Just to clarify things there, I'm old, but not that old. Um, because when you're in business development, you go beyond that 30. The 30 is based on the idea that you meet at least 30 people professionally a year. Why would you not connect on them? And I see that Maru has a question. And um, if you can wait to the end, Maru, we're getting close there. Um, otherwise, um, you know, if you want to put that in the chat, um, you can, I can be interrupted. Um, but yeah, over at least 30 per year, you meet at networking events, you meet clients, people you met in your past employment, and then you really start. That has to do with things, even like with creator mode, when you have a newsletter, the first time you do a newsletter, it goes out first time only to all of your followers. After that, it only goes out to the people who asked to subscribe. So there's a number of things involved with that. But if it goes out to just your 500 connections and then maybe 25%, 25% is considered a very good percentage to subscribe. So 25% of your 500, 250. So, you, you know, if you build your network up and you've got the 7,000 and I get 25% of my 7,000 subscribe, that starts to become much more valuable. So who do you connect? Do you connect to just anybody and everybody? Heck no. I recommend you connect to people you know, people you'd like to know, and people who know people you'd like to know. So if someone asks to connect to you, and their headline says, you know, six figures in six weeks, you know they're just going to try and sell you. Why bother? Just don't accept them. But if you look at their profile, they look respectable, professional, reasonably well-connected, then consider connecting with them and sending them a message asking why they wanted to connect and how you can help them uh, and start a conversation. So I've tried to do this over the years and it's got harder as my network has got bigger, but I pretty much know who my 7,000, how I'm connected to those 7,000 connections. I don't know them, but I know how I'm connected. Um, but you wanna expand it out a little bit beyond just people I know or the people I've met in person or I've had some relationship with. Um, and broaden it out a little bit. Yes, people are always trying to sell you on LinkedIn, but there are also a lot of people that are just growing their networks, they're building relationships, um, and they're opportunities to start conversation. So to increase your visibility on LinkedIn, lots of ways you can do that. Anything that counts as activity, to be honest, logging into LinkedIn counts as activity, sending private messages, Happy birthday, congratulations. That activity that nobody else sees that's private counts as activity. It's all good. You don't have to be all fully visible. But now if you can engage publicly, you get a double dose of um, value. You can like, comment, or share. Now with engagement in terms of visibility, there's different value placed on each of these things. So commenting value has more value in the algorithm than like. Share has very little value, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it. I reckon that whatever you are willing to do is good. Congratulate people. Is it superficial? Heck yeah. Um, but people, human beings are superficial. It's, um, we have to start there and we build from there. Comment on people's posts. Um, that gives you a great value. There's things like use at least five words. Unfortunately, just like there are a lot of fake profiles on LinkedIn, there are also a lot of bots and things, programs that are against LinkedIn's terms of service. 
doesn't stop people using them. And they can usually, the bots can usually do comments that are like one to three words, you know, good job or very interesting or something like that. So at least five words indicates that you're a real person. And it also shows you as having some thought leadership and something interesting to contribute to the conversation. And when you comment your name and the first line of your headline shows up free advertising every time you do that. So if you consider that marketing is what, maybe 20% of your time and your business, and you divide that up between the types of marketing you do, email marketing, paid advertising, whatever, and you include LinkedIn as one of the things you do, and you say, okay, LinkedIn's going to be 10% of my marketing effort, then work out how many hours that is. It's probably not a lot. You can get a lot of bang for your buck by spending uh, 10 to 20 minutes on LinkedIn every day. LinkedIn likes daily activity more than a chunk of time once a week. When I work with busy executives and they say, I just don't have time. I say, well, how much time can you give me? 15 minutes? They say, no, too much time. So can you give me 10? They say, okay, well, maybe 10. And so they say, but it, you know, it sucks up my time, I spend too much time, and then I, I don't do what's important. So what I do is I say, okay, set your timer for 10 minutes and do what you can. And according to what their goals are, we identify what they do in that 10 minutes. And then when the time goes off, step away from the computer and you go back the next day, excited to go back and not thinking, oh, it's just a time suck. So um, get engaged, do things, make an offer to help. You don't have to be always promoting, selling your services. Um, offer to help someone in some way, even pick up the phone and say, I saw you were looking for a recommendation for such and such. Um, I can help with that not yourself, but somebody else. And post content. If you truly are a thought leader, um, get that content out there so we know what you've got to say. So all kinds of things you can post on LinkedIn. And again, they have different value according to the algorithm. There are text posts, picture posts, text posts with images, videos. Um, videos, if you do video, upload it natively to LinkedIn. Don't use a link somewhere else. LinkedIn doesn't like links, go figure. But people don't like links. We don't want to have to click on something. We want it to play right where we are. Document posts. If you've got some long, meaty content, a document post is pretty cool. Um, po polls were hugely popular a year or so ago, and they got a little overused, and people got burned out on them. But they still have a place. They still have value. Links, maybe they don't get a lot of uh, visibility, but certainly as part of your mix of sharing, why not? And articles, when articles first came out on LinkedIn, like the longer form blog content, um, I was one of the early adopters and I got thousands of views. Well, because so many people write on LinkedIn now, you don't get that kind of visibility anymore, but it doesn't mean you don't do it. If you're writing an article on your website, you may also want to add it to LinkedIn. It, you get sort of double SEO, and it does show a different kind of thought leadership. So when you post on LinkedIn, who sees it? People say, well, you know, I put this stuff on LinkedIn. I, I pay somebody to post stuff for me and they're posting every day and we're getting like, you know, 10 views, 20 views. Well, in general, when you post something on LinkedIn, it goes into the feed of maybe maybe 10% of all of your connections. So say you have 500 connections, it's going into the feed of maybe 50 people. Doesn't mean they're seeing it. It means the people who might have seen it if they happen to be looking at that time. Um, and so the, the magic of how you get more people to see it is that engagement. The more you engage with other people, the more the LinkedIn algorithm says, oh, we've got a live one, we've got some active engaged, we're gonna show their stuff more too. And it also, the people see your name. So if you are seeing really low views for the stuff you're posting, um, have a look. Are you also liking and commenting on other people's posts? If you're not, LinkedIn has learned your tricks. They've learned you're just putting stuff out there. Um, we call it spray and pray. You know, you're just putting it out there. You don't care what's coming back. Then um, you're not getting the value from it. You need to engage in order to get the reward and visibility on your own stuff. If you engage with other people, you can get that visibility to maybe more like 25% of the size of your network. Um, so that's what you want to aim for. It's very unpredictable, no magic formula, but engagement is as close to magic as I can give you. Do you need premium LinkedIn? Do you need to pay for it? In general, my recommendation is no. 
So um, LinkedIn gave me premium for about seven years for free as a um, because of some nonprofit work I did. Very generous of them. And what I used it for is mostly to show my clients why they didn't need to pay for it. Now, some of you who are actively doing prospecting on LinkedIn, you may want to consider Sales Navigator. That's about, I don't know, $79 a month. Uh, the, one of the more expensive tools. That is pretty sophisticated and good. It'll really allow you to prospect. You can do a lot of prospecting in the free version, but LinkedIn will then tell you you've reached your limit of search. It resets at the beginning of the next month, so you, you still can do it. Um, premium, regular business premium allows you a few more searches, but in general, I don't think it's worth the money. So what I'd love to see is what you are going to do on your profile and put in the chat what you are going to commit to doing now, meaning today, this week, um, and just put something you were going to do on LinkedIn this week. Not everything, because you say everything, you're not going to do it. Just one thing, put in the chat. You know I'm going to be checking. And I'm, what if I think that's, um, I'm going to go to questions. At the end of my slides, I do have a variety of resources. I'm going to look at chat. And I'm going to look at your questions. Um, and let's have a look there. And also what you were going to do. I'm seeing some, some questions. Okay, committing to engaging. Rachel, my favorite thing. I'm so glad that you're going to do that. Um, if you want the slides, I don't know whether Patka sends out slides. If not, you can just connect with me on LinkedIn and ask me, put where you met me, and I'd be happy to send them to you. Um, so someone said in keywords, I love it. When a recruiter asks you to connect, it's a good or bad idea. That's, I'm, so I'm going from the bottom, which is probably unfair to the people at the top. I'll go back to the top in a minute. It depends. Um, recruiters are just looking to add the numbers because the larger their network is, the more they can search to find potential clients or candidates. Um, now, sometimes my daughter connected with a recruiter some years ago. She was had a job she wasn't looking, but her friend said, oh, I want to get a job with that company or something. My daughter introduced them. The friend got the job. My daughter is a hero. So, you know, um, I'll connect with quite a lot of recruiters because I have job seeker clients. So if I can help them in that way by making them more visible, I will. But it can be a bit, you know, you're just... You're just adding to the number. So it depends how you want to um, use that. Um, so let me go up to the top questions because the people who asked early, I don't want them to feel neglected. <laughs> uh, relations come first, opportunity follows. Absolutely. And I see all those numbers there. And okay, if somebody's put there. Yeah, by all means, connect with each other. Like as I say, I put my uh, code in there for you to connect with me. By all means, put your LinkedIn URLs, uh, your profile URL in the chat, connect with each other. That's how you keep this conversation going. And the value of it, you know, when the meeting ends, this is how you connect with people and you start. <laughs> You're not, my dog doesn't agree with, okay. Um, a featured, it's under add a section. And then there's three categories, the core, basic and additional is the first one under the second one, the feet, uh, what did I say, core, uh, the second, whatever the second one is, I've forgotten, I haven't memorized it so because they changed that fairly recently. And you should be able to see it there. If you can, let me know, and I'll help you find it. Um, and it used to be that it would uh, show on your profile if you hadn't added it, and allow you to add it. But then once it became rolled out to everybody, you have to physically add it. Once you've got one thing there, it stays there. But if you don't have anything, you need to add that section. That's true of pretty much everything on LinkedIn. Once you've added it, it's that section's there, you can add more. But until you add it, it won't show. Um, okay, yeah, the whole thing of 10,000 connections, but oh, it may only be 300 active. You know, it still gives you greater visibility and reach. Can you tag people? And LinkedIn, absolutely. And you don't have to be connected to people to tag them. Uh, beware of doing, I can't remember, there's an expression for it, where you like tag a bunch of people. Because if you tag a bunch, you know, like you're basically using them to try and get attention to your post. If they ignore you, what you've done is you've taught LinkedIn that you're spamming people. 
So definitely tag people, but do it carefully. You know, a few people, people who actually would like to see the content or would like to contribute to it. Um, more organic. Okay, using automated connection engagement services. I am the wrong person to ask. I am part of a large group of LinkedIn trainers around the world who um, violently, vehemently disagree with the use of these tools. LinkedIn, in, when you sign your user agreement, when you set up an account, you are saying, you sign that you will not use these things. But what happened is LinkedIn tried to go after the companies that were doing it, and they mostly lost the court cases. And it was also like whack-a-mole. They couldn't stop them. So now they go after you. If they catch you doing it, they can suspend your account or they can take it down completely. I'm personally not willing to take the risk. There are people that take the risk, do this, grow huge networks, get it taken down, start it all over again. Um, so I do not recommend it. That's not how I use, you know, I don't build relationships on LinkedIn through bots. Um, there are people who teach it, who will show you how to do this, not me. Um, and yeah, they're all against LinkedIn's terms of service. So you absolutely, you could have your account taken down, you know, without uh, any, they might give you a warning, they might not. Somebody's gonna work on a new tagline, Maru, I'm looking forward to seeing what that is uh, next month. Private messaging activity. Yes, it does count as activity um, because, and in fact, what's interesting, if you private message someone, you may find all of a sudden you're seeing their content much more in your newsfeed and they'll be seeing your content too as well. So yeah, it all helps. And I see you putting your LinkedIn URLs there. That is awesome. Sales Navigator, 960 a year. Oh, it's up to 100 a month now. Okay, it was about 79, 80, so it's gone up. No, no, so they, they it's a little tricky, Sandra. They advertise it at 79 a month if you pay 960 a year. Ah, ha, 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 gotcha. Okay, um, so it, but it's, you know, if you're doing serious, um, prospecting, it, it's a worthwhile tool, but you can do so much free prospecting that unless you're gonna really use it, then I would save your money. Um, okay, Maru, they paused my account three times because I work in uh, people from my network and events and my um, so quickly that they claimed I was using automation software. Yes, and that is true even when you're not, sometimes like if I do a speaking event and I connect with a lot of people because of that, I'll get a warning, um, but um, it was not a warning. They, they paused my account. I lost, I don't know, three, four or five days and I was in EMBA events and I really wanted to do that because I'm going to forget about it. I'm never going to add those people. In fact, I never added them. I just don't have enough attention span. And they paused my account three times and they threatened of blocking me forever from LinkedIn. And I just tell them that's stupid anyways. Uh, yeah, you know, unfortunately, because of all the bad eggs out there that are using things like that, They've contaminated the pool for people who are doing it, you know, and using it legitimately. Um, there are so many people doing some nasty things out there. It's just really unfortunate. So I, those are the only questions I see in the chat. Anybody, we have a few minutes left. I am yours. Questions? I had a question about, um, it's the one about um, whether or not private messaging activity counts for the algorithms. Yes. So yeah, it, does. it doesn't give you the benefit of advertising names. So if I do something publicly, I'm showing my name and my headline to all of the people who on that post. So I'm getting a lot more value out of it. The algorithm still likes me for sending private messages, but I get a lot more visibility if I'm doing it publicly. Um, I do a lot of um, participation in a group. It's a private group on LinkedIn. Groups in general on LinkedIn are not of great value, but they still have some. I happen to be a member of one of the groups that is hugely valuable. And uh, it's a paid group. And so I sometimes participate so much on there that I forget that I'm not being seen by the outside world. So I have to make sure I find available. Um, so yeah, so the, the replay of this is going to be available on the PACA site. I had somebody ask me about that in advance because they weren't going to be able to. No, be... somebody just asked again. That's yeah. why. And Carl, okay, is so polite. You've got your hand up. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to ask you a question. Um, for some reason, when I go to my, my profile, I do not see, um, I see activity, analytics, take a skill quiz, 
but I don't see, um, what would you, would you call it, featured? I don't see it anywhere. What you does that mean? This add profile section? Yeah, I'm, on, I'm sorry, say it again. Add profile section, it's kind of um, a oval bubble. Hmm, add profile. It says add profile section. Where, where would it be? At, um, where at the top oh, oh, there. Oh, I see it now. Okay. So click on that and then add on the second choice. Add position. Core base, under basic. I think it's core, basic, and advanced or something. I can't remember. Okay. And under yeah. that second one, you should see featured. I see. Okay. All right. Got I'll have you. to work on that later. Did you find what? it though? I did find it. I, I didn't find I didn't find featured yet. Did no. There is a, a weird little quirk on LinkedIn where some people can't find it. It's not there. If that happens to you, let me know and I will give you a link to add it directly. I've had a few clients that that's happened to. Okay. So just send me a message and I'll send you the link to add that. It's a, a, it's a glitch. LinkedIn is glitchy. A lot of glitches happen, especially when they're rolling out new things. I have a glitch at the moment where there's some things I can't do on my mobile and they can't figure it out. So they can't help me enough. Very frustrated. Um, um, Rachel, your hands up there. Hi, uh, I had a question. So I have the slightly awkward situation on my LinkedIn where I'm full time an engineer and then have a part time life coaching uh, um, job, which I'm like slowly growing, and I never know how to promote myself because I don't. I I'm always torn between which one I'm promoting, and they're different enough that it's even though I, I promote for, I coach engineers, it's still complicated. So I was just curious if you had suggestions. I, do, and the tagline. I was thinking of the tagline, especially. Connect with me offline and let me give you some resources. I'm, if you search on Google for more than one thing on LinkedIn, you will see my stuff shows up organically as, as, as uh, because I've written about it. I've done videos about it because it's, it's, it's a common problem, especially for coaches who tend to, you know, grow that part-time business slowly while they're doing something else. So just send me a message and I'll send you okay. the resources. And there are a number of ways you can deal with it in your headline. You have a choice at the top of your profile. You don't have to show the company logo so you can show no logo and then just let your headline do the work for you. And there are a few other little tricks you can do. So yeah, okay. let me give you some resources. Okay, well, do thank you. Uh, so Carl, uh, Carly, you're gonna do more stuff. I'll be looking on the lookout for that. Um, any other questions? Um, I think we have, do we have four minutes? Nope, you know everything? Could, could, awesome. you, share, could you share your, your LinkedIn profile on, on the chat? I certainly can do that. I closed all my um, um, URLs because- No, don't worry, I'll post it for you. I have your profile I open. I didn't wanna uh, use any bandwidth that might make this crash. I've been known to do. <laughs> where, where, where is this profile? I don't see. I don't see it. Yes. Somebody said they're going to add it for me. I'll. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Yep. So there it I is. have a question about the about the video. I, I got to remember to send you the messages, uh, Sandra. By, by the way, because when I invited you, I could write a message, but. LinkedIn doesn't allow me to write you again, obviously not to spam you until you've accepted my request. So I'm gonna have to wait with my two questions. But, <laughs> uh, but uh, the video, you said that should be uploaded, that can only be uploaded using the mobile app or did I misunderstand you? The, um, um, for the, the, cover, the profile video on your yeah. profile, the little video there, that has to be uploaded on your mobile. Regular video for that you're posting that you can upload from your computer. Yeah. And I encourage you to upload the MP4 file natively because then it will play right in the feed rather than having to click on a link to take you to YouTube or somewhere else. Is okay, that, that's for that posting that? videos, yeah. Yeah, no, no, you answered me. It was about the profile video. Uh, so it's gotta be shot by on the phone. There's a good app for that. You gotta upload it. You can do it on the computer, download it yeah. to your phone, upload it from there, you know, so, like. Uh, the likelihood I use my laptop to do any video is like 0.1%. Why would I do that? It's, the phone is much easier. So I, I guess that's- I can tell you it's younger. <laughs> For some of us, it's oh, not. No, no. <laughs> that's, 
Oh yeah, well that was the, yeah well that was inconsiderate of me. But the, the there was a good app. Maybe you can use that with your clients too. It's called Loom. We've used that in my in my my MBA classes uh, to upload because a lot of the projects we have to upload had to be in video mode, and that app works very well on the laptop and on the phone, and it's it's right. it makes editing and packaging videos very easy. Right. When you want to add uh, to LinkedIn, though, it needs to be an MP4 file. And MP4. I don't think Loom is saved in an MP4. I think it's a link. Oh, damn it. Okay. So be careful about that. And you can try something out and let me have a look. But I, I, I believe that it's, um, it's, you don't, it's, it's, a, it's a link. It's not an MP4 file. Thank you. So all these quirky things. LinkedIn tends to like certain <laughs> I think I need to shut up, um, shut up and go and accept your invitations request so that you can send me <laughs> questions. Um, well, Sandra, I want to thank you for a fantastic briefing today and answering all of our questions. And I think we'll break here. Thanks very much. You're welcome. I look forward to seeing you online, guys. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.